Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a bunch of results over the last two weekends. I am finally back from the Sydney BSF. So here to cover the last two weeks, all the results, all formats, and even some of the tournaments over in Japan as well. If you guys need any coaching for the BCS season, hit me up on my MetaFi. My link is in the bottom right hand corner. Feel free to book a session and we can get started. So just looking at the Vancouver standard, most of the team compositions are pretty much figured out now. Uh, the first place team, NJR, playing a Jet, Overlord, and Eva composition, a very um, typical uh, team composition, a very you know common one that we see. Usually we see Jet, Eva, and a Restander, and don't OT me, bros come in second place, obviously replacing the Overlord Restander with Youthberg, which is kind of like a Restander, and then third place with uh, Foxport with the Jet, Eva, and Lutetia, also a Restander, and then the fourth team, DMN, with a Bastion Prime Jet and Lutetia. Definitely something that, you know, slightly different, not bringing an Eva and substituting for a Prime. Uh, this deck has fallen off a lot, uh, but you know, sometimes this deck can just come back, steal some wins, and then, you know, roll with it. So congratulations to all the teams there. Jumping into V, so we had a WCC with Charlie. This is Steven, Lees, and Tyler Yu's team. So congratulations uh, to the two of you, along with Charlie. Taking Luard, Thavas, and Anj. Ryan is always tidy, coming second with Luard, Matt Rose, and Leopold. Uh, Birdman coming third place with Jewel Knights, Leopold, and Luard. And then Gamer Word coming fourth place with Goguet, Thavas, and Maiden. So as we can see, lots of decks, a lot of viable options. Uh, most of the teams brought Luard. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, the team might not bring Luard and might have, you know, other choices, other common choices like Leopold. Uh, we've seen it in some of the other ones as well as some of the other regions. Thalas is also a really good pick as well. They're jumping into premium. So Akane Best Girl coming first place with Thalas, Beatrice and Maiden. Second place was Less Dance with Maiden, Thalas and Gridora. Third place was an obscure one with uh, a Shurinui, Gridora and a Dialiner. And then fourth place was Ghost Light with Highlander, uh, Rising Nova and Victor. So we do have the Shu and Nui list. Pretty interesting. Um, in the early game, you know, you you run this and essentially when it's placed on the Vanguard circle, you top five for two normal units with stealth and then uh, put one into your soul and then call one. And I think some of them can chain to each other if I'm not mistaken. So this one, if I'm not mistaken, uh, creates tokens. Uh, I think it creates tokens. Search your deck for grade three. No, no. Okay, so I'm thinking of the wrong, of the wrong one. So no, um, this one essentially at the end of battle it boosted, put it into soul and bounced two rear guards, um, and then essentially your ungai, ungai on the stride can reduce your opponent's vanguard to eleven, um, which is good in this meta game, especially if your opponent hits an OT, goes straight back down. Um, but focusing on the zanki, which is pretty interesting. Um, having, you know, domination on the rear guards, uh, more domination focused deck, um, but also having Mizukaze, one of the most broken cards in the game, um, just locks your opponent out from guarding. So yeah, pretty interesting list. Um, otherwise, some of the strides, like, pretty normal for Nobutama. Um, but yeah, I think this deck will be much, much better with the history collection. Um, but yeah, we'll wait and see how that rolls out. Then we do also have the Victor. Uh, Victor has been like one of these very common decks. Um, I think I played one in Sydney. Uh, I also played one twice in, in Indonesia. Um, so yeah, Victor just seems like this deck that keeps popping up. Um, obviously, Sazanda multi-attacks with the Busted and then pretty much drawing a bunch. And then, yeah, you, you know, you hit your OT. That's a wrap. So yeah, uh, pretty cool list. I think this deck will evolve uh, once History Collection comes out. Maybe substituting some of the victors for the old victor um, so that you know you can jump if you're going first straight into a stride. Then we have the w WGP Season 2 in Shanghai. Uh, so this one uh, had two Jets, two Gandiva, two Ebisu, one Willista, and one Minerva in the top eight. And then what took it all was the Jet. And then the second place was Gandiva, and then third and fourth were both Ebisu. As much as people say that, you know, Gandiva is the best deck, it's not unbeatable. Um, and I think a lot of people felt that with Jet and Eva, especially this season in the Western side, um, because we're moving into the DB10 
DBT 10 season. Um, just know that, you know, Gandiva is going to join the lot uh, by not being an oppressive force um, to essentially contend with the rest of the metagame. Um, I think Evo, you'll see a slight drop off just because Gendiva um, has a really good matchup into it. Then looking at WGP Season 2 Malaysia, so this one introduced uh, DBT11, uh, as you can see, with two Ezels, two Hex Orbs, uh, one Gendiva, Jet, Willista, and Eva. And then the first place was Gendiva. Gendiva is a very popular deck at the moment, and we will see a pretty much a spike in Gendiva players uh, come the second half of the year into the BCS season, uh, because BT, DBT10 um, and then going into 11 as well, you'll see Gandiva being a very, very popular deck and a very affordable deck, easy to make as well. Uh, just buying from one of the new set, which is Dragon Masquerade, you get a full blown meta deck in that as well. And then second place uh, was Kelvin Chiang with uh, Ezel, and then uh, Siafik, uh, Hai Kiao? Hai, hai, hai Kiao? And then third place. Uh, was the Jet, and then fourth place was the Willista. Then, looking at just the Ezel deck real quick, uh, this deck obviously has a jump engine, pretty much you ride to one, ride to two, jump straight to three, regardless if you're going first or second, but most of your cards are actually bound behind having your opponent being a grade three Vanguard. Um, so like your Witch, uh, lock behind your opponent being grade three, uh, so a lot of this become or well, starts as vanilla and then transitions into uh, cards with effects. So pretty much it's just Unga Bunga bash your vanguard, bash your opponent's vanguard, and then yeah, as the game progresses, then you know more stuff becomes live in terms of their effects. Then looking at the Netherlands, which is the same weekend as BSF Sydney, so Eight Gaming coming first again, Eva Jet Overlord, and then second place also an Eva Jet Overlord. RLB and then shiny card bonk addiction Sini card bonk addiction. Yeah, sure <laughs> And then the third place team it was a flagberg magnolia and a Tamayura definitely an interesting uh, team composition and Looking at the fourth one was Adam from record of Ragnarok uh, Eva and the Minerva so lots of you know obscure picks coming third and fourth um, very cool to see. We don't have the Magnolia list, but I'm pretty sure um, I ended up seeing it. Pretty self-explanatory Magnolia Eldar um, with the Grade 2 Goat that becomes 25k if it's at the back um, of the Vanguard. But the deck, I think, um, focused on crit, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, still an interesting deck to see in the top tables as well. Then we have V Premium. So Team Breakthrough coming first with Thavas. Astral Pilots and Anj. Then Rulebook coming second with like Glendios, uh, Battle Sisters, and Astral Pilot. And then third place with Team Cardiff. So this was Solemn's team. Congratulations, buddy, with Luard, Astral Pilots, and Leopold. And then fourth place was RLB, Shiny Cardbonk Addiction with uh, Chaos Messiah, Anj, and Luard. So just looking at the Glendios list. Uh, so this list was very similar to Gabriel Teo's list in Singapore where you run essentially 4-4 of the grade 2 for maximum grade 2 and ride consistency uh, for Glendios because it's your you know main ride target to Chaos to essentially deal with the XL matchup and then pretty much everything else is you know <clears throat> grade 1s or reverse units and then you just chuck them all into a deck a lot of these are 13k base um, because Obviously, if you're on Chaos, then if you need to play a Rear Guard, then it becomes 15k as opposed to 12k, making your numbers a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, very, very cool deck. Uh, and then jumping into Premium. So this was singles. I think this would have been paired with Standard. So first place was Daniel Favier with NLK. Second was Dave Vect, a very well-known name, the world champion for Premium last year. Uh, with Jet Maiden and then Maxime Jalon with Battle Sisters and then Mo TT or Muhammad uh, with Regalia. Then jumping to Sydney, this is where all the crazy stuff happened. So first place was taken by Kai's team, so WCC with Kai, Mark and Kelvin bringing a Jet, Eva and Overlord, probably the most trendy team composition there is at the moment. 
two and a half Viets coming second with Jet Eva and Youthberg, and then two and a quarter cubed with Lutitia, uh, Jet and Eva, and then Shadow Wizard Money, Jet Eva, and Youth. Very, very, very sweaty meta. Every team has an Eva, every team has a Jet, and every team has a ring standard. Absolutely sweaty. Um, but yeah, you know. Kelvin being the god he is, 10-0 with Eva, and then the whole team went undefeated the whole day. Absolutely broken players, so congratulations to them. Um, what a fun event, I think it was like 81 teams, the highest Australia has ever gotten. Um, very, very cool to see. Then, on the same day as standard, uh, Toby and I decided to play V Premium, and we came first place along with Gary Otio, uh, so Caesar cards, we came first, bringing Davos, Leopold, and Ange. I had a self-conflict as to whether to bring Leopold or not. And a lot of people said, you know, if you're not bringing Luard, you are coping. And uh, during my testing, you know, I went through, tested against Luard, and I'm like, this deck, you know, kind of bricks every now and again. Have to play like a little bit of a longer game. Uh, so that the deck kind of flourishes in the early game. It's eh. Sometimes if you brick and don't find your three, it's just kind of like every other V deck anyways uh, So you know what screw it, you know, I'm gonna play a deck that I really like and you know Maybe I'll get my first great nature top before Solomon and I did but then he He took it on the same weekend, uh, but due to time zones he took it later uh, so yeah Decided to play Leopold, and this was our team composition. Uh, nothing in particular, we just found that Luard... Um, we, we didn't have a really good experience with it, um, and just playing against it, just play a super aggressive deck, two XL decks with Ange, um, yeah, just made it all the much better. Um, so yeah, that's our team composition and our little story between why we didn't choose Luard. Second place was Jeff and the Indogs, so Martin's team uh, with Ange, Junai, and Luard. Blaze at zero with Junai, Pinot Noir, and Ange. And then BSG with Ange, Luard, and Leopold. So each team had an Ange, and I think Ange in a solo format is really, really strong. Much stronger than Luard because it's more explosive, especially with the Aqua Lisa Lot engine. It just makes, you know, rushing in the early game that much better. And then looking at the premium side of things, so two and a quarter cube broken team coming top four two days straight. They brought Highlander, Jet Maiden, and Thalas. And then Barney is my daddy coming second with Vanquisher Dungaree. So the Dungaree is there, I guess, for the mirror match or something that binds uh, Gridora and Rising. And then I'm, I'm about to come with uh, Highlander, Jet Maiden, and Gridora, and then Neko coming forth with Jet Maiden, Raging Form, and a Vowing, Vowing Saber deck that focuses on a D Grade 3. Uh, the D Grade 3 essentially says something along the lines of Soul Blast 1, bind 3 cards from drop. If, you, if your opponent couldn't bind 3 from drop, uh, the unit gains 10, but essentially you're setting up for a Stunverse play, going into Vowing, ripping your opponent's hand apart. And yeah, that's pretty much how the deck functions. Um, just looking at the Raging Form deck though. Uh, so 4-4 four, four Raging Form, just like, you know, a V Raging Form deck. Uh, Rukia, the Rukia pair, and then uh, the Dark Blast Angel. So essentially when you sack it, you CB1, search for grade one revenge and call it. And then mana is essentially free advantage. You're playing additional angel to put yourself from four to five. Um, and then you're playing Alfie to essentially rest and search for your Raging Forms, it's free plus. Um, and then essentially everything boosted by Rinnell if you hit, you know, top five for a Revenger. And then the deck itself ran more than usual crits. Uh, so you only run two draws. Um, and then, is it one Sentinel crit? I think that was it, right? Well, oh, one Sentinel crit and then one Sanctitude. So playing uh, 10, 10 crit. No, no, 9 crit, 2 draw, 1 OT. Um, but otherwise, yeah, very, very cool deck. Um, I saw the deck in play, and yeah, pretty annoying to verse, especially because you can't give them 5, otherwise you die. And yeah, the deck just restands a bunch, really, really cool. Um, and obviously with Chain Rancor as well, the guard restrict is kind of annoying. So yeah, uh, that was the Raging Form. And then jumping to Nagoya, they had the Vanguard Deluxe over there, so split into two blocks, top, eight, uh, top 16. 
deck breakdown. And then just looking at the pie chart real quick, um, dominant with Gandiva, with Willista and Jets, still really strong, and then just a bunch of other decks because of the diversity cut. Then the top four, uh, first place team brought a Minerva, Eva, and a new Tamayura. So we'll look at the deck um, that they brought for that. Second was a Zorga Mask, uh, a Lestial, and an Ebisu. Third was Youth Gandiva and Ebisu. And then fourth was Hexorb, Aquamarine, Willista, and Overlord. So just looking at the Tamayura list, so this one has now uh, essentially taken out the old Tamayura and then put in the new one. I think the new one's really good. It's just consistent. You ride into it. You, I think you two to one. You draw one, you two to one. So draw one for the Persona ride, you two to one. Um, and then just does exactly the same as you know what Tamayura did before. The good thing is, is that it still keeps the inherent um, blanket for the 5k because it applies to the fighter and not the unit. So yeah, uh, you still get your multi-attack shenanigans, still have broken toys um, and all the good stuff that Tamayura has. Then looking at the Alestial deck, uh, this Alestial deck is pretty cool. Essentially the raging form of D, uh, where Alestial just keep rewriting and rewriting. Um, and yeah, just as it is, this uh, deck ran the... The one that I think it's like, um, it makes you both white wings and black wing. Um, and then that way you fulfill the effects of uh, the new Alestial. And the good thing is, is that, you know, you run three of the old Alestial. Oh, this is really maxed. So this is like the LSR. Yeah, this is like fully blinged out Alestial. Very, very cool. Um, and then obviously all the other good stuff. I think this one is like, it restands if... Um, if it's like center rear guard, uh, so it restands if a unit is placed in the vanguard circle or something like that. So yeah, very very cool deck. I think this deck is very overlooked, um, obviously because Willista is essentially taking the scene at the moment for uh, the lyrical side of things. Then the last block, again dominated by Gandiva and Willista, and this is probably the trend that we'll see come into, you know, set 10. So 11 and then going forward as well. Then the top four teams brought Ebisu, Gandiva and Minerva to first place. Second place was Gandiva, Eva and Ategria. Third place was Gandiva, Ebisu and Minerva. And then fourth was Mega, Lono, Zuchi, Jet and Eva. So just looking at the Ategria list, obviously uh, new from set 11. Uh, only running one light because essentially your grade 3, your new grade 3, copies the name of the light, which uh, essentially provides you double persona ride. And then you have cyclers. Look at the top three, I think. Um, add one add one or call one to hand and then rearrange the top or something like that. Or top two. Um, and then playing the Keda Dragon Tree Marker unit, uh, which is pretty interesting. Maybe... Um, I wouldn't say you would need the Dragon Tree Marker, um, but I think the secondary effect, I don't remember what it was, um, but yeah, the secondary effect probably plays a real big part uh, in this deck. And obviously, because you're so focused on Persona Right, each of your Persona Rights are 15, so you're essentially plus 30k to the front row. That's pretty disgusting. So yeah, that's pretty much all the results over the last two weekends. We do have two more. I think this week is Malaysia, and we also have Singapore coming up as well. Um, and then obviously we're transitioning into the season two of Mango Deluxe. Um, so lots more results coming there. So if you guys like this video, pop a like, comment down below what you guys think of all the results over the past few weekends. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, click subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.